to testify to the truth. Okay, Daniela, can you see? Truth, yes. Eunice, one more time. Yes, to testify to the truth. <laughs> key verses, verse 37. Let's read the key verse together. Okay. Okay, shall we go? Jesus answered, You are right in saying, I am He. In fact, for this reason I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth, Listen to me. One more time, together, please. Jesus answered, You are right in saying, I am a king. In fact, for this reason I was born. For this, I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. Okay. We thank God that we could study in Matthew and Luke's Gospel, the Last Supper, just prayer at Gethsemane, his trial, death, and resurrection. We are so thankful for the detailed, rich accounts of these events. Those events happened from Thursday night to Sunday evening of the Passion Week, nearly three days. Those three days would be the most, most important days in human history, including the day of his birth and the day for him to return to the earth. The four gospel accounts support one another and together make the story of the life of Jesus complete. The days of his suffering were more than one could say. But Jesus, during those, day, those days, is shining more and more in his holiness, solemnity, majesty, righteousness, truthfulness, and obedience as the Son of God. His resurrection is truly powerful and glorious and victorious, giving true and everlasting hope to mankind. Today we are going to study Jesus' trial, arrest and trial within John's Gospel with a brief insertion of Peter's denial. We see all the more the beauty of his person and his action amid the sufferings. Now, in verse 1, chapter 18, after finishing his prayer in the upper room, Jesus left his disciples, and left, Jesus left the place with his disciples, and crossed the Kidron Valley, and went into, <coughs> went into an olive <coughs> grove on the other side. Judas knew the place, so he came with a detached guiding, a detachment of soldiers, and officials from the chief priests and Pharisees. This detachment is about 200 soldiers. It's good to understand the detachment of soldiers, 200. When you also refer to other in translation, it's called Holt. Holt is a tenth of a legion, 600. So it could be from 200 as many as 600. And also, a few hundred officials, they are temple guards, temple police, when you refer to Luke's Gospel. So what an army force to arrest an unarmed man. Surely, they feared Jesus. They heard of Jesus cutting the stone, walking on the water, liberating the dead. They feared. And such an army first came. And they were carrying lanterns, torches, and weapons. Then, in verse 4, Jesus, knowing all that was going to happen, went out to them and asked, Who is it you want? 
They replied, Jesus of Nazareth. Right away, Jesus said, I am he. And it says, when he said, I am he, they threw back and fall to the ground. Fell to the ground. We think about even the crowd who began to gather, sensing the situation, one by one. Probably it could be as many as 1,000. But when Jesus said, I am he, they fell to the ground, became flat. What a scene. What the power of his word. In three words, I am he. Ah, that's the ground. This Jesus is the one through whom all things, were, all things came into being when he spoke. When he said, let there be light, and there is light. And he said to a paralytic, an invalid man with a 38-year prolonged infirmity, Dying down, just commanded him, get up, pick up your mat and walk. Then he took his mat and walked. Jesus said to the turbulent wave of the sea, quiet, be still. Then the stormy sea became calm, the wind died down. He raised Lazarus, who had been in the tomb for four days. Lazarus came out, he came out. Isaiah chapter 11 verse 4 says, He strikes the earth with the rod of his mouth. With the breath of his lips, breath of his lips, he slayed the wicked. Paul said in 1 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, The Lord Jesus would overthrow the lawless man, the final antichrist, with the breath of his mouth, and destroy him with the, by the coming of his splendor of his coming. In I, Revelation chapter 19, <clears throat> about Armageddon battle, the final battle in human history, out of his mouth comes a sharp sword by which we each strike the nations. So what a description, the rod of his mouth, the breath of his lips, the breath of his mouth, the sword of his mouth, all refer to his word. And here Jesus said, again okay, asked, who is it you want? They said, Jesus of Nazareth. And I told you that I am he. I am he is written three times. And I am he, I am his, yes, tentrogrammaton. Daniel often says, Hebrew word, oh, name of God, Yahweh, Jehovah. I am. God said to Moses, I am who I am. And Jesus said to the Jews, before Abraham born, I was born, I am. And at the beginning of John's Gospel, he wrote, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, the was with God. At the time of his arrest, he revealed himself as God, I am. He is in complete control. And then he says, if you are looking for me, let this man go. With the divine power he displayed before the enemies, he protects his people. His protection is complete. And John wrote, This happened so that the words Jesus has spoken would be fulfilled. I have not lost one of those you gave me. Jesus said in John chapter 6, This is the will of him who sent me, that I shall not lose I shall lose not, I shall not, I shall not lose, not one of them, even, you have given me. I raised them up at the last day. When the situation became favorable, sensing it, Peter, with a sword, do it and struck the servant of thy priest, according to his right ear. The servant's name is Marcus, but Jesus commanded Peter, put your sword away. Shall I not drink the cup the Father has given me? You will see our Lord Jesus. Majesty, divine power and love, and his sure obedience to God. Now, from verse 12 and verse 28, Jesus trial before Annas, and Peter's denial before the servants of the high priest are juxtaposed against each other. John writes back and forth. 
the trial, the denial. That's the trial, that's the denial. Let's see this contrast, interesting contrast. Yes, they arrested Jesus and bound him and brought him to Annas, the father-in-law of the high priest. When Annas questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching, Jesus said, I have spoken openly to the world. I always thought in the synagogues or temple courts where all the Jews come together. I said, not, I said nothing in secret. Why question me? Ask those who heard me. Surely they know what I said. What Jesus is saying is, simply, bring the witness. Do it legally. He was not uncooperative. He was simply asking for the legal treatment, exposing the illegality of the trial. And Jesus said, at this, one of the officials nearby struck, the, struck him in the face. Is this the way you answer the high priest? The officials, the temple guards, they carry the club. It's most, like, most likely that he struck the face, struck him on the face with a club. <coughs> That's also a fulfillment of the prophecy written in Micah 5 1. They strike the Church of Israel with a rod on the face, on the cheek. What a fulfillment. Even such an act is fulfillment. Jesus was in the court before the judge, but even this act shows that Jesus is the true judge of Israel and all people. <clears throat> the hit on the face. And then Jesus said, if I spoke something wrong, if I said something wrong, testify as to what is wrong. But if I spoke the truth, why did you strike me? Jesus could have, could have ignored him. Because this is the fulfillment of God's prophecy. But Jesus was mindful of him, even this man, that he might always know the truth. Mm. And then Anna sent him, still bound, to Caiaphas. Yes, Jesus was physically bound by his spirit, heart, were free and glorious. That's our Lord Jesus. But let's see, Peter. Peter could not identify himself as one of his disciples. When the servant God asked Peter, you're not one of his disciples, are you? I'm not, he said. He was asked again, you're not one of his disciples, are you? He denied it, saying, I'm not. <coughs> and then, one of the servants of the high priest, the relative of the man whose ear spirit had cut off, challenged him. Didn't I see you with him in the olive grove? He denied it. So he denied, I'm not, I'm not, while just said, I am. And I was not with him. So Peter's denials are here terrible on every level. They are disloyalty, cowardice, pride, and fear. Here we see Peter's, this here we see Peter in iniquity, while we see Jesus in glory. But Jesus is under the trial and was going to the cross to pay the price himself for the iniquity of Peter. Later, Peter said in 1 Peter chapter 2, he himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. You know, Peter's sins are terrible. Judah is also terrible. Judah betrayed him. But there is difference between Peter and Judah. Peter loved Jesus. Judah, no, not. Judas, no. No. Peter loved Jesus. That's why when he remembers the words of Jesus, he repented. And he could be forgiven and wound be healed. Then he lived for righteousness in the grace of Jesus. Traditionally, it was written that it was said that Peter was crucified upside down. 
That's what Jesus predicted about his life in John chapter 21. He said, he said to Peter, I tell you the truth. When you're younger, you dressed yourself, went wherever you wanted. But when you're old, you stretch out your hands. Someone else will dress you and go where you want to go. And John commented, he said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. When John wrote this gospel, Peter already was martyred. John could see the fulfillment of the prophecy of Jesus concerning Peter. Yes, this, now let's see the trial before Pilate. You know, when you read John's Gospel, John did not write about the trial before Caiaphas and Sanhedrin. The trial has two before Annas and two more faces. There's a dark night trial and then daybreak trial. At the dark night trial, that's illegal. They decide to put Jesus to death. And then through daybreak trial, they try to make illegal verdict legal. And now, early in the morning, they led Jesus to Pilate, to the palace of the Pilate. Matthew used the word praetorium. Marcus used the praetorium, the same, palace, praetorium. Praetorium came from the Latin word praetor, the same as governor and prosecutor, procurator. So when they led Jesus to the palace of the Roman governor, they wanted to make use of the Roman law and legal system to execute Jesus without a riot among the crowd. Mm. And here John reveals the hypocrisy of the Jews. When they condemned Jesus, innocent Jesus to death through the dark night court, they showed the uncleanness of their conscience. But now they want to keep to, to avoid their un ceremonial uncleanness. It's not written in the Old Testament ceremonial law, but according to their mis the Codification of Jewish law, Messina, Messina, place of Gentiles are unclean. Anyway, here they want to avoid uncleanness, not entering the palace, so that they may be able to eat the Passover. Other contradiction. And since they did not come in, Pilate went out and said to them, What choice are you bringing against this man? Right? Question, legal treatment should be, legal court should be. Then they said, if you're not criminal, you don't hand him over to you. Just they regard Jesus as a criminal with no indictment. Then Pilate said, you take him yourselves, take him yourselves and judge him by your own law. He was reluctant to take care of this case, to deal with this case, because no charge, no arraignment. Also, Pilate sent soldiers to the place to arrest Jesus. He must have heard about how Jesus arrested, no resistance. And Pilate also knew that out of envy, they handed Jesus over to them. So, he didn't want to deal with this case. You do it. But they said, we have no right to execute anyone. <coughs> the Jews objected. And here, John commented. This happened so that the words Jesus has spoken indicate the kind of place he was going to die would be fulfilled. Three times Jesus said how he would die. It's not by be stoned, to be stoned, by being stoned, but lift up on the cross. In John chapter 3, just as Moses lifted up the snakes in the desert, so the Son of Man. And in chapter 8, when you lift up the Son of Man, then you know that I am the one I am claimed to be. And chapter 12, when I'm lifted up from the earth, I draw all men to myself. Three times you said, now, what a fulfillment, even in their expedient saying, with the seeming correct words, we have no right to execute someone. So, Jesus' trial before Pilate was their plot to get rid of Jesus. But we see here God's plan, it is God's plan for the salvation of mankind to the cross. Now, let's see, there is a conversation
between Jesus and Pilate, between an eternal king and a representative of the king of this world, Pilate, as Roman governor. Let's see how the conversation went. The conversation began. Now, Pilate went in, inside the palace and summoned Jesus and said, Are you the king of the Jews? Background of this question is written in Luke's Gospel. We have found this man subverting our nation. He opposes payment of taxes to Caesar, claims to be Christ, a king. When you refer to Matthew, Mark, and Luke, at this question, are you the king of the Jews? Just said, yes, it is as you say. But John wrote in detail here. Jesus said, ask them, this is your own idea? Is that your own idea? Or did, your peop or did others talk to you about me? Hmm. Probably you hoped that Pilate may even think of meaning of the king of the Jews. But he said, he said, I married you with your people and your high priest who handed you over to me. What is done? Yeah. What is it you have done? Surely Pilate knew what Jesus has done, but he wanted to make sure, <coughs> confirm it from Jesus' own lips, innocent. But here Jesus said something fundamental. Something fundamental, Jesus says. To really help this beautiful soul out of his broken heart, reveal the truth about his kingdom and kingship at this historical moment of standing before Pilate, the judge. Let's read this verse together. What did Jesus say? Okay, please. Jesus said, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jews. But now my kingdom is from another place. My kingdom, my kingdom, my kingdom. Three times Jesus said, Show his kingdom. Pilate only saw the kingdoms of this world. The kingdom of Egypt, of Assyria, of Babylon, of Medo Persia, of Greece, of Rome now. This is Roman Empire, kingdom of the world at that time. Probably, maybe Pilate hoped that kingdom of Rome would be forever. But Jesus wanted him, Jesus wanted him to be able to see beyond the kingdoms of this world, introducing his kingdom from another place, from heaven. There is such a kingdom. At the time of Jesus' conception, Gabriel said to Mary, The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. At the time of conception, the angel said, His kingdom will never end. And at the outset of his missionary ministry, Jesus preached, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. He told his disciples to pray, Your kingdom come. So, the kingdom of Jesus, his kingdom is kingdom of heaven and kingdom of God. All are connected. And then Paul said in 1 Thessalonians, uh, Paul said in Colossians chapter 1, Give thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the kingdom of light. He has rescued us from the dominion of darkness, the kingdom of light, the kingdom of the Son, He lives. So, the kingdom of, kingdom of the Son, Jesus, is now the kingdom of light. Jesus is under the trial, would be crucified, and rise again for this kingdom. The foundation of His kingdom is His death and resurrection. And we read in Revelation chapter 11, wonderful thing, the kingdom of this world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of His Christ. Kingdom of this world, kingdom of Jesus. Christ's kingdom is invisible to the eyes of the world, but real and true in the hearts and lives of his people. Amen? Amen. His kingdom is real. And this kingdom will be visible on the earth. When the kingdom of this world becomes the kingdom of our Lord, the Son Christ, when he comes again. What a kingdom! Kingdom, kingdom, kingdom. Yes. Then Pilate asked, Where well, a king then? Then Jesus answered, Let's read this verse together. 27 from Jesus answered. Okay, Jesus answered. Let's go. Jesus answered, You are right in saying, I am a king. In fact, for this reason I was born, and for this I came to the world to testify to the truth. 
everyone on the side of truth, listen to me. Now, he confirms that he is the king of the kingdom. He was a prince. He was the prince of a heavenly kingdom in infinite power and glory and honor. But he came to this world, was born as a baby, as human. When Pilate said, when Jesus said here, for this reason I was born, for this I came to this world. Jesus revealed his humanity, his humility, and also his deity, his God-man. Why? To testify to the truth. What truth? Truth about God, man, and the world. The truth about sin and death. The truth of salvation and judgment. And truth about heaven and hell. When I go to campus, when I talked about heaven and hell, these words are not for me, not Unfamiliar, familiar words then. They understand, yeah, recognize it. Jesus testified to heaven and hell, there is. And he tells truth about way of life, way of destruction. Testified to the truth. And in Revelation, it says he's the faithful witness. Faithful witness, chapter 3. Faithful and true witness. In John's Gospel, he spoke what he had seen. He was hated and persecuted simply because he testified the truth. Now it's the point of under the trial again and again to be crucified. And Paul said in 1 Timothy chapter 6, while testifying before Pontius Pilate, he made a good confession. And Jesus said in chapter 4 of John's Gospel, I am the way and the truth and the life. He is the truth. Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. God is the truth. Yes. <clears throat> Finally, Jesus said, Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. Let's read this verse together. Last one. Okay? Everyone on the side of truth listen to me. In our translation, Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. There's no way to know the truth rejecting Christ. No way. Whoever they are, how great they are. Humanly speaking, they cannot know the truth rejecting Christ. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. Rejecting Jesus means they are not of the truth. In chapter 3, John said, Everybody, everyone who lives by the truth comes to light. They repent. And Jesus says to believing Jews, if you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples, and you know the truth, and truth will set you free. But they reject Jesus' words. They did not accept Jesus' words to the end. It turned out to be children of the devil. He, Jesus said, and honestly said, Whoever, hear, whoever ears to hear, let him hear. Repeatedly, whoever ears to hear, let him hear. We have ears to hear. And he said, that my sheep listen to my voice. Also, in Isaiah chapter 66, who is the one? He is the one I favor with, I look with favor. Whom God looks with favor, the one who is humble and contrite in spirit and trembles at my word. God's words are not one of ideas. God's words are the truth, ultimate truth. Blessed are those who tremble at his words. And Jesus said, my sheep listen to my voice. How tragic it will be if it turned out to be not Jesus' sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. Jesus' sheep listen to his voice, especially at the crucial time. And Jesus said, there are other sheep. For now, of this pen, they also listen. So, God wants us to preach and teach the word of God. There will be those who listen to his voice. There shall be one flock and one shepherd. 
Mm. Clear mm. said, everyone on the side of truth listens to me. And at this part said, what is truth? After hearing such a wonderful words of Jesus, he said, what is truth? We often hear this question in our postmodern time. This question is true if there is no Jesus. True, right question if Jesus did not come to testify to truth. But since he came and testified to truth, no excuse. May help us to really fight better for the truth, having a broken heart for them, God, wrong God's broken heart. Fight a battle for truth. Mm. <clears throat> Young people in our time. Make our post to know this. Everyone on the side of truth is to me. Once again, God's words are not one of ideas. No. They are ultimate truth. My sheep listen to my voice. There are those who seem to listen but do not hear his voice. Turn out to me. Not Jesus sheep, that's we are most afraid. They really hear Jesus' voice at the crucial time. Mm. Again, battle, fight battle for the truth. And here, now, with this word, Pilate did some, said something right. Something right. I find no base for a charge against this man. Right. It could have been finished. But he sent Jesus to Herod. And Herod sent him back. No guilt. And he began to compromise. <coughs> First compromise was according to custom. Release a prisoner. Governor can do that. So, shall I release? Do you want me to release the king of the Jews? He said. But they said, no, not him, Paramus. He failed. Another compromising was present Jesus, tortured Jesus. He flogged, he had Jesus flogged, severe torturing, and then soldiers twist the crown of stones and put on his head, and they clothed him in his purple robe and struck him on the face. See this Jesus, torture Jesus, helpless. No hint of res resistance, rebellion, no. Went to sword the madness of the crowd, but he failed. The very interesting thing, there is talk of war between Pilate and the Jews. Talk of war. Do you know talk of war, Jonathan? Yes. This way they talk of war. When Pilate said, here is the man. They said, crucify, crucify. Then Paul said, you take him and crucify him. As for me, I find no base for a charge against him. They said, then we have law, according to our law, he must die, because he claimed to be the son of God. Then Paul was afraid. Second chance to come, have conversation with Jesus. Just said that, yes, we have power to crucify me or free me. But that power is from heaven. Yes, your privilege, but you have responsibility. Clearly said. Then, from that time on, he tried to set you free out of fear. But the, they kept shouting, If you let this man go, you are not a friend of Caesar. If anyone claims to be, if anyone op opposes the king, claims to be king, opposes Caesar. They went about Caesar. He must, his heart must have sunk. Being no friend of Caesar means his life security would be gone as a governor. Afraid. So he brought Jesus, sat at the judge's seat, at a place known stone pavement in Gar Aramaic, Gabada. It's the day of preparation of the Passover week, 6 hour. Time is written 6 hour, 6 a.m. It's the time of the end of Jesus' trial before Pilate to be crucified. It's the time of Pilate being condemned in his story as the one who, speaks, who crucified Jesus, Son of God. Historically condemned. This time he was condemned. More dreadfully, eternally condemned. What a time. 
still talk about a war is going on. But they said, here is your king. They said, take him away, take him away, crucify him. Pilate said, should I crucify your king? They said, Priest said, we have no king but Caesar. Finally, they had sent him over to them to be crucified. This is the result of the compromise. What's the point of long description of this? <clears throat> point of long description. Yes, it's the case of Pilate, but it's applicable to all people. Whether to choose Jesus or the world, hear the voice of Jesus or the voice of the world, or to commit or to compromise. Truth demands commitment. That's why John wrote in such a long way, talk of what is going on in our lives. May God bless to make a personal commitment to Jesus, the truth. Thank God for Jesus, who is I am, who is the king of the truth. His kingdom is real and eternal. He is the worthy of our commitment. May God help us to live by the truth and fight for the truth, listening to Jesus. Amen. On his side. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Father, what a meaningful passage, especially the conversation between Jesus, eternal king, Pilate, representative of the king of this world. Although deep shepherd heart just had such a conversation with the pilot. But in long, long struggle, finally he just handed over to be crucified. So it's applicable to us. Remember us, be merciful us. Thank you for Jesus who is clearly revealed. I am truth, king of truth. His kingdom is certain and forever. No one, no one is worthy of our commitment but Jesus, the truth, the king of the kingdom. Remember us. Each one of us take a personal commitment to the truth, to Jesus and his kingdom. Really, hearing Jesus' voice in this world, live and fight for the truth. Thank you for your words. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.